Hello and welcome to this first video in the C-Sharp programming tutorial series on Table Flip Games. I'm Tommy and in this series we'll aim to guide you through the fundamentals of how to get started writing in the C-Sharp programming language. This series is aimed very much at those who have little to no experience at all in writing C-Sharp or programming in general and it's inspired by classes I've taught in the early semesters of undergraduate university courses on computer science and games programming. So first things first, welcome! In this series I'm going to be focusing on programming from the ground up. Now if you've never written programs before, you're essentially writing a series of instructions that can be executed by a computer. Depending on what you want to do, and sometimes how you want to go about it, you will use different programming languages in order to pull that off. This series is aimed at familiarising you with the principles of the c -sharp programming language. c -sharp is a general purpose object oriented programming language. Object oriented programming is one of if not arguably the most popular programming paradigm currently used in the software industry. We opt to use c -sharp to build up your skill set in this area for a number of reasons. First up, c -sharp is the successor to a number of programming languages that have adopted object oriented principles such as C++ which is used in game engines such as Unreal, Java which is utilised in a large amount of enterprise development but also on Android and Objective-C which you can use to write software on iPhone. c -sharp is very similar to many of these languages but note that while I'm saying it's similar it doesn't mean that one of them is better than the other. However for a newcomer c -sharp is pretty clean to get to grips with, with many of these concepts found in C++ and Java then refined for ease of use in c -sharp. What is important here is that we're focusing on programming principles, as such many of the concepts we're going to explore in these videos are equally applicable in other languages. You'll just need to learn the syntax, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Secondly, c -sharp is utilised in the Unity game engine, a popular video game engine that we will also have videos for here on Table Flip Games. As such, if you don't know the first thing about c -sharp, you can work through these videos before starting to get to grips with that engine. This series will look into a variety of topics that you need to be able to know to work in the language effectively. Right now on screen I'm showing you some of the topics I'm going to cover, but this is far from exhaustive and it aims to give you a taste of what's to come. This is of course not the full extent of what c -sharp can even do as a language, but it's enough to help you begin to write your own small programs. In addition, we'll be taking the time to look at some larger examples and break down how to solve each of these problems as we go. Now before we can write any code, we need to make sure you have all the software you need in order to manage your projects and actually properly write c -sharp. In this instance, I'm running my projects on a PC running Windows 10, but you can still have a fairly similar setup using a Mac. There are two really important components needed in order to get started. First up is Visual Studio, Microsoft's Integrated Development Environment or IDE, which is available on both PC and Mac. This is where developers write code, manage source files, build executables and run their software during development. It also contains all the backend tools we need in order to build your C-sharp code into an actual program. So check the link in the description to head to the Visual Studio website. There are a number of paid for versions of Visual Studio, but we only really require the free version in order to get started. The second item we need is a separate text file editor, as I'm going to spend the first couple of videos writing code in Notepad++ and not in Visual Studio. Head over to the link in the description and download Notepad++. Now you might think from looking at this, it looks quite similar to Notepad or WordPad on your PC already, but it's actually a lot more flexible and versatile than that. Now some of this, notably Visual Studio, is going to take time to install and get running. As such, I'm going to spend the rest of this video discussing some basics of c -sharp and programming in general, so set off that Visual Studio installer, then come back as I give a brief overview of the basics of how programming works. If you're not familiar with how programming works, the key thing to know is that computers, by nature, are actually kind of stupid. A computer will not perform an action unless it's told to do so. As such, we can tell the computer to execute specific operations through instructions sent to the central processing unit or CPU on board the machine. Now the thing is, that was roughly the gist of how things worked over 50 years ago, but not anymore. Nowadays there are multiple layers between the programmer and the CPU itself, which requires operating systems to schedule multiple programs their own time with the CPU. Right now you're watching this video either on a computer via a web browser or on a phone or a tablet using a designated app. In each instance the application is running on top of an operating system which manages your device, itself being comprised of lots of smaller programs that all need resource in order to get things rolling. Now think about all the other programs you have running on your device right now. That all adds up and all of these programs get a tiny slice of time every second to run a little bit of their program to complete their specific task. It's why your computer sometimes slows down if you do too many things at once. You're asking it to split up its time across more and more programs, 
all vying not just for CPU, but the memory of the machine that's needed to store information about the programs it's running. As I said earlier, your code will be telling the CPU what particular instructions to do. Thing is, the instructions your CPU can complete are actually really basic and mostly revolve around the completion of arithmetic, mathematical operations, storing information in registers, which are holding spots for data on the CPU. Now, that doesn't really make for an easy and accommodating method of getting started with programming, not to mention the fact that you achieve this using what we call machine code, a set of instructions that are encoded in lines of binary digits, zeros and ones. Now, just because that's how CPUs operate, that doesn't mean we still have to. So programming languages such as C-sharp are what we refer to as a high-level language. It enables us to write software using terms and structure more similar to human language, and when we're ready to run our programs, we have to translate this high-level language into machine code for the computer to run it. Now this gets us to one crucial element we'll be looking at in our opening videos, the notion of using a compiler. A compiler is a critical part of the set of programming language tools that translates your C-sharp program files into machine language that will enable you to run the program on the hardware. Right now, we're only going to be writing in one file, but after a few videos, this will expand into projects with multiple files. The key thing is, the compiler will gather up all the files we've written, double check we've written the language statements correctly, and create the corresponding program executable which can be run on the computer. This is a process that we call compiling. Compilers check we've written programming language statements correctly. What that means is, it checks that what we've written makes sense for that programming language. If we've written anything that's incorrect, the compiling process will fail and the compiler will tell us what it found wrong in the code. Think of it like a linguist who's translating what you said, but needs to be 100% sure of what you said before it will make the fully translated transcript. We'll be looking at how to cope with compiler errors along the way and become more resilient to dealing with them. You're going to make compiler errors when writing your code, and that's okay. It happens to all software developers, typically on a daily basis. The only difference is that developers such as myself are a lot more comfortable in dealing with them. Well, actually, there's usually a lot more cursing and swearing at the computer, but I'm going to try and keep that out of the videos. As we'll see throughout these tutorials, some of the biggest problems you might face are when your program fails to compile, but you're not entirely sure why. Given that the compiler will complain when an error occurs, but it can't really tell you exactly what you did wrong. Instead, it makes a guess based upon where it failed to translate your code. We're going to come back to talking about compiling code and dealing with errors in the upcoming videos, but it's something that's really worth addressing as we step in. So with that, I've covered my basic introduction and covered a little bit of theory, so let's get to actually programming. In part two, we're going to write what we call a Hello World program. It's the simplest program you can write and it will help us get to grips with writing and compiling our code. Welcome aboard and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.